Hello, I am Elmira and in this lecture I will tell you about the current technologies for the isolation of biologically active substances and their use in the development of functional foods. We will talk about what biologically active substances are and discuss the main methods of their isolation. Nutrition is the most important factor of the external environment which determines the proper development, health and working capacity of a person. According to World Health Organization experts, approximately 60-70% to 70 of human health depends on nutrition. Currently, there is a shortage of nutrients and biological active substances in modern food. The addition of any essential nutrients to food products, vitamins, micro and micro elements, dietary fiber, polyunsaturated fatty acids, phospholipids and other bioactive substances of natural origin leads to an increase in the biological value of these products. By optimizing formulation it is possible to obtain functional foods for certain population groups. Certain regions of the planet need various biologically active substances depending on the climate, lifestyle and cultural characteristics. For example, under conditions of lack of sunlight, vitamin D deficiency may be a relevant issue. In regions with a high risk of diabetes, it is important to enrich foods with substances that will have a beneficial effect on carbon hydrate metabolism. For example, essential fatty acids. Biological active substances can be defined as nutrients and non-nutrients present in the food matrix that can produce physiological effects beyond their classical nutritional properties. Biological active substances can be of plant, animal or synthetic origin. Plants are rich sources of biological active substances, which contain a wide range of different chemical compounds with various effects. For example, phytoncides, which are contained in large quantities in onions and garlic, can inhibit the growth and reproduction of bacteria, microscopic fungi and protozoa. Tepines are hydrocarbons found mainly in the essential oils of coniferous plants, but not only. For example, carotene is a carrot pigment, which is a provitamin A, belongs to tetraterpenes, and it is a powerful antioxidant. Glucosinolates are the biological active substances of cruciferous vegetables that have attracted great interest in the last decade. Their anti-carcinogenic, anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties are being actively studied. Biological active substances of animal origin are not so diverse. They are not so rich in vitamins and minerals, but certain types of vitamins can be found mainly only in animal products, for example, vitamin D and B12. Bioactive substances can also be synthesized. For example, alkaloids, which are highly active but also highly toxic. This led to the production of a number of synthetic drugs related to alkaloids, which are less toxic. On an industrial scale, ascorbic acid, known as vitamin C, is also produced synthetically from D-glucose. Glucose is catalytically hydrogenated with pressurized hydrogen to give desorbital. L-sorbose is obtained from the latter by biological oxidation by the action of acetobacter xylenum. Treatment with acetone gives 2,3,4,6-diisopropylidane L-sorbose. Oxidation of these products in alkaline medium after hydrolysis yields ascorbic acid. The most popular method for isolating biologically active substances from plant materials is extraction. This is a process based on the distribution of extractable components between immiscible phases. The extraction method has been used since ancient times and we encounter its simple form every day when we brew coffee or tea. The simplest extraction method is maceration. The word maceration comes from the Latin maceratio, to soak. For maceration, similar raw materials are placed in a vessel with an extractant and left for some time to extract biologically active substances into a solvent. 
organic substances such as methyl and ethyl alcohol, chloroform, hexane and water are usually used as a solvent. The choice of solvent depends on the chemical characteristics of the group of biological active substances. After maceration, the extract can be separated from the pomace by filtration. This method is simple. Maceration does not require special equipment. In addition, it is a soft extraction method. A significant disadvantage of the method is the low yield of extractives. It's also time intensive. Currently, maceration is combined with extra steps such as ultrasound. It is used to accelerate and intensify physical and chemical processes in liquids. In an ultrasonic field, cavitation, acoustic currents and other effects occur that contribute to the rapid mixing of liquids and solid particles. The boundary layers between different liquids and between liquids and solids are eroded, and the extraction processes accelerate. An ultrasonic homogenizer or an ultrasonic bath can be used for ultrasonic extraction. A disadvantage of this method is the possible destruction of biological active substances with incorrectly selected parameters. Therefore, this method requires careful optimization of extraction parameters. Another way to intensify the extraction is exposure to microwaves. The microwave extraction system allows to significantly reduce the extraction time while increasing the yield of extraction. Modern equipment for microwave extraction makes it possible to minimize solvent consumption and even carry out subsequent evaporation of the solvent. A disadvantage is the tricky optimization of the extraction parameters to obtain an extract of a particular composition because destruction of molecules can occur under the action of microwave field. Also, during the extraction process, the temperature rises, to which organic substances can be sensitive. The first attempts to automate the extraction process date back to several millennia, but the truly successful attempt belongs to the German agricultural chemist Franz von Soxlet. His team designed the device that now bears his name, the Soxlet apparatus. The Soxlet method is still a relevant extraction method that does not require expensive equipment. One of the most effective extraction methods can be called supercritical fluid extraction or CO2 extraction. This is a type of extraction where supercritical fluid is used as a solvent. Any substance at a temperature and pressure above the critical point is a supercritical fluid. The properties of a substance in the supercritical state are intermediate between its properties in the gas and liquid phases. On this slide you can see the diagram of the phase state of carbon dioxide and the conditions for its transition to the supercritical state. Schematically, the process can be represented as follows. Supercritical fluid under high pressure flows through the raw material. Next, the resulting extract enters the column with a lower pressure, resulting in the separation of the solvent. In reality, the process is more complicated. The ability to control the dissolving power of carbon dioxide by changing temperature and pressure makes it possible to highlight such advantages of the method as selectivity, the ability to easily separate the solvent and its repeated use. It should be noted that the necessary equipment is quite expensive, as well as the fact the carbon dioxide is a non-polar solvent which limits the range of extractable biological active substances. This problem is solved by the additional introduction of a co-extractant, usually an organic solvent. Steam distillation is used when it is necessary to purify or isolate high boiling organic compounds insoluble or sparingly soluble in water from the reaction mixture. Steam distillation is the most common way to obtain essential oils. It is used in cases where the raw material contains a relatively large amount of essential oil and the distillation temperature does not affect the quality of the end product. 
The boiling point of the individual components of essential oils range from 150 to 350 degrees Celsius. However, all these substances in the presence of water vapor are distilled at temperatures below 100 degrees Celsius. Pressing is a method of producing plant oils by mechanical force. Plant oil is obtained by pressing and the residual oil is about 7%, so pressing is suitable for high oil crops such as sunflower seeds, rap seeds, flax seeds and so on to make the production of plant oils cost effective. There are hot and cold pressing technologies. Hot pressing is considered the most common method in which the seeds are subjected to mechanical and thermal processing. First of all, the seeds are crushed using shafts, then water is added to the dishes when they were crushed. This is done so uh, that the seeds do not burn during the frying process. The end products are characterized by a dark color, a viscous consistency, a strongly pronounced taste and smell. Such oil is suitable for use in cooking. However, frequent use can lead to a lack of essential fatty acids and significantly reduce the level of immunity since seeds lose their useful components during pretreatment. During cold pressing, the seeds are not subjected to grinding and heat treatment. With this method, whole seeds are squeezed out using special press. A future of using this processing method is that the temperature at pressure does not exceed 40 degrees. Cold pressed oil is lighter in color, not so viscose, without a strong taste, but with a pleasant and delicate smell of seeds. Finally, it is worth mentioning another way of isolating biological active substances – microbiological synthesis. Vitamin B12 is obtained by microbiological synthesis from propionobacteria. To obtain vitamin B12, bacteria are cultured in a batch method under anaerobic conditions in a medium containing corn extract, glucose, cobalt salts and ammonium sulfate. On the slide you see the stages of synthesis vitamin B12. The resulting vitamin is a red crystalline substance. Well, this section is complete. Thanks for your attention.